No, Supreme Kai is not scared of Pui Pui, nor is he weaker than him. That's just there for the people who are already commenting down below and trying to say based entirely off a of title and thumbnail that I'm wrong because, well, they obviously, uh, you know, haven't seen the whole video yet. But for those of you who are going to watch this whole thing, you guys are the super elites. Hey guys, it's Mike here. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions I've seen in the Dragon Ball fandom, and I've been a part of this for a very long time. Not only on YouTube for over 10 years now, but, well, anyone who's a big fan of Dragon Ball probably knows that there's tons of misconceptions, either based upon people who haven't seen the franchise in a really long time, haven't read the manga, or just are either believing misconceptions or just straight up lying. And that would have to be... Why people believe that Pui Pui is stronger than Supreme Kai and that Supreme Kai was afraid of him, which he obviously isn't if you use common sense, but as we know in this day, common sense is basically, well, a superpower. So I'm going to break that down using the manga, explaining in depth, well, why that isn't really the case. Of course, if you guys are new here or you're interested, you can subscribe to my channel down below in uh you know this video or you know wherever that button is available highly recommend doing so because that way you'll be able to see all my videos whenever they come out uh including well very long after the fact because oftentimes what will happen is that during certain uh, periods of the year, you will not be able to see my content because YouTube has deemed it not so. Kind of like, you know, when Winston decided not to uh, take out John Wick when he had the chance. Oh, how uh, the high table is not a fan of that. But all right, guys, let's get into that right now as I show these different manga panels. And we'll get into, well, Supreme Kai when he was first introduced in the narrative. So, uh, I actually have to re-record this video because I just recorded it. It was perfect, almost like so. And then what ended up happening? Well, we found out that, you know, in fact, it wasn't. Uh, so, the thing is that with regard to Supreme Kai and his power, we don't really get any sort of uh, indication that he's as weak as a lot of people make it out to be early on. So, with regard to that, when he's first introduced, it's completely the opposite. We are told and shown by the reactions of everyone that he is no one to mess with. Rather, he is somebody who instead seems to have a lot of power within him. He knows exactly who Goku is, for instance, and he's been looking forward to being able to spar with him. Now, of course, he says that I have no delusions of beating you. I just want to see how strong you are. May I shake your hand? At this point, he's pretending to be, uh, you know, humble. But as we know, with the next scene, with this smile right here, he's anything but. He's very smug, and uh, he's about to get that looks wiped off his face in this arc time after time after time again, because he never really acts like this anymore. And so, as a result... During the scene, he seems to be probing Goku somewhere and looking at the face. I think it's pretty clear that he's definitely probing something. And so what he says here is that, just like the rumor said, you have a fine spirit. So it's not that he's testing Goku's strength. He doesn't know for a fact what Goku's power level is just because he shook his hand, which becomes more and more obvious as the story goes on. But rather that he sees that Goku, well, he is, uh, well, a good guy at heart. He can tell that he's not evil, but rather good. He's able to figure that out by holding his hand, probably because he has some kind of inherent Kai-based ability, much like, you know, being able to spy on people all around the universe at any time. But another little thing that he gives right here is the fact that the rumors said you have a fine spirit. And this is a major thing that comes into play that Supreme Kai and his estimates of people's power isn't based on fact necessarily, but rather is based on speculation, hearsay, and of course, rumors. At this point, he still thinks he's more powerful than Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and everyone else. However, Goku makes it clear winning won't be so easy after all, because this guy isn't weak, as many people believe. The only time that we first start to see Shin kind of cracking under the pressure is not just in relation to what he's mentioning and relaying about Majin Buu, but when we see the first most powerful henchman introduced to us uh, in terms of Deborah. 
As Shin points out right here, he didn't know that uh, Bobbity had Deborah under his power and that he's the Demon Lord of Darkness. One of you is likely the strongest in this universe, but Deborah is the strongest in the Demon universe. And then he goes on to say that he doesn't think that they have much of a chance because of the fact that Deborah is right there, which, you know, he basically confirms right here when Vegeta asks him. Now, shortly after this, what ends up occurring is the fact that, well, we see that Deborah, he flies up on everybody and he proceeds to, well, uh, kill Kibito, in turn, Piccolo and Krillin, Kurilin, into <laughs> stone. This is the point where Shin shows up and he's not afraid of fighting Bobby's henchmen. Rather, he's more concerned about the fact that the heroes, Goku and uh, Vegeta and Gohan too, are going to, well, lead to the release of Majin Buu. He only starts to show fear and trepidation when Vegeta is mentioning how they could just destroy the ship and release Majin Buu accidentally, which will happen even if he's not his full power, he could kill them all and destroy the Earth. Again, remember, out of everyone here, Shin is the only one who has actually seen Boo in person. He's fought him before in the past, thousands or millions of years ago, depending upon the translation. Thus, as a result, he is, well, the only one with the real knowledge here, whereas everyone's constantly underestimating the power of Boo and, well, the henchmen. To be fair, they also underestimate the Saiyans, including Shin here, which we go on to see very shortly after the fight with Pui Pui. This is where Pui Pui enters the fray, and we see that Shin is utterly shocked because of the fact that, you know, he's kind of flabbergasted and taken back by the Saiyans playing Jonkin or rock, paper, scissors in order to see who goes first. Now, he says, you're going to fight him alone? Vegeta says, of course, he's no match for me. Now, this is Vegeta boasting, because the thing is that no one here can actually sense the power of the fighters that Bobbity has on display. This is a major thing that tons of people overlook. Uh, as Supreme Kai says right here, uh, it is that they uh, are gathered by Bobbity. In this one, he just says he has strong fighters, but rather... He gathers the most powerful evil beings around the universe to fight for him. And he also strengthens them through the Majin Boost. I talked about in a video you guys can see in the top right corner just what the Majin Boost is, what it entails, and does for the characters. You know, short story, it uh, will bring out their fullest potential. But no one can sense the power of Pui Pui, of Deborah, or Yakan, as I'll get into soon. It's rather that he's going on the idea that oh no, uh, he might have gathered the most powerful fighters in the universe to him, and these base Saiyans, they might stand no chance. We should fight him together. Uh, and so again, Shin isn't afraid of Pui Pui. In fact, he wants to team up to fight him to eliminate any chance of any energy whatsoever being gathered to release the one he's really afraid of, Boo, because he's the only one who knows how strong he is. And we see this firsthand. We see that Debo or we see that Vegeta is wrecking Pui Pui with ease. And at this point, we see that Shin is acting like everyone else. Huh? You know, Goku, well, he's not surprised, but Deborah and, uh, of course, Bobbity are. Deborah said that the uh, Saiyans, they had the potential to help them to release Boo. But he doesn't actually know how powerful they are. A lot of people say that, oh, the reason why, you know, he uh, took his spit and put it on on uh, Piccolo, for example, is because Piccolo is weaker than the base Saints. No, he isn't. Obviously, it wouldn't make any sense for us to somehow think that Piccolo, who is stronger than semi-perfect Cell at this point in time, probably at least somewhat comparable to regular perfect Cell before he became super perfect after seven years of a guy training nonstop, who was already not super far behind him in the Cell games, considering the fact that he was fighting on par with the Cell Juniors, just like Vegeta and Trunks did, and we're going to somehow believe the base Saiyans got hundreds or thousands of times more powerful in seven years, even though they're only slightly above Gohan, makes no sense, and that whole argument completely falls apart. The fact of the matter is, I'm going to do a whole video about the base Saiyans and how strong they are in the Boo saga. I think in many ways you can argue it's massively overestimated by the fan base, but 
you know, people love numbers in this, especially big numbers in this fandom. <laughs> but either way, as we see, uh, eventually Bobbity tries to give a uh, improvement to Pui Pui to show just, you know, to help him by giving the 10 times gravity. He doesn't know that these are Saiyans. He doesn't know that they developed biologically under 10 times. However, what happens here? Does Shin immediately drop down? Is so weak? Oh, I can't stand under 10 times gravity. No, he, he doesn't because it's nothing to him just like it's nothing to Vegeta and the other ones there, especially in the anime where he's jumping around like a boxer and then just obliterates him easily. At this point, we see just how shocked Shin and Babidi are. Now, this isn't to show them side by side to show that they're just that level of power. No, neither one of them is physically relevant compared to the full power of the three Saiyans gathered here, but... Again, it's more to show that the ancient beings who this fight is really about are completely marveled and shocked by the true power of the Saiyans here on display. Just base Vegeta is able to easily kill Pui Pui. Supreme Kai is way more powerful than the base Saiyans, as we saw when he restrained Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and some of the other things that go on, so obviously he'd be able to easily kill Pui Pui himself. But... The fact that he's shocked here by Vegeta is more that he had no idea Vegeta was this strong. He assumed that, you know, the base Saiyans were nothing compared to him or Babidi's fighters. So it's more of a subversion in that sense. This leads into the coming of Yakon. And at this point, we also get this iconic scene in the history of the Dragon Ball power scaling community where Vegeta starts to talk about how he doesn't think that Deborah is much of a big deal. Now, at this point, we say that, uh, or we hear that Goku says that this is true in that seven years ago, they fought Cell, and Deborah is probably about the same level of power. Now, so many people would be like, oh, he's referring to perfect Cell, or even to lowball it even more, semi-perfect or imperfect. No, Goku's talking about a uh, super perfect cell here. That's the only cell that they would be talking about. Toriyama makes his manga simple. It's very easy that he's talking about the strongest uh, version of the strongest fighter that they just fought. Just like when uh, Supreme Kai mentioned Frieza earlier, he was talking about Frieza's most powerful form. It wouldn't mean anything if he was like, oh yeah, I could, all of the Supreme Kai's could kill uh, weakest form Frieza with a single blast. Yeah, anyone could do that at this point. That's the whole idea Toriyama is going for, that it's the strongest version, which I talked about in two videos, actually. One about how Deborah is, uh, you know, who would win the fight between him and Gohan if the fight continued, and also who uh, would win between him and Super Perfect Cell, both in the top right corner and on my channel. I did a lot of versus battles last year that you guys can all check out. This is when he starts to be surprised by the true strength of the Saiyans, because again, he was underestimating them until now. I can't believe it, the Saiyans are that strong. But thinking about it, Gohan was so powerful back then. What if that wasn't his full strength? And again, Gohan just went Super Saiyan 2 to show it off to Kabito. He wasn't really geared up and ready for a fight. He unleashes way more powerful, uh, way more power when Boo is about to be unleashed. This is when Yakon shows up, and again, Shin shows that, you know, he isn't basing his power off of sensing Yakon, but rather off of hearsay. This is the monster Yakon, and nobody at this point can sense him, like I said before. You know, Goku is completely caught off guard, not in a super way where he immediately loses, but in a way to where he is shocked by the speed of Yakon on display. This is when Shin again says, let's help Goku. Not, oh, I'm so afraid, I'm going to go cower in a corner because I'm weaker than Pui Pui. No, he's saying, let's help Goku. He's like, okay, I'm going to fight this guy too. And realistically, he would have been able to beat Yakon based upon, you know, some of the estimates we can get from these fights. But the fact is that nobody senses him, nobody knows for sure, and of course, Goku wants to do it himself. And we get this even more proven when uh, Goku's fighting in the darkness, the dark planet, and we see that he says not that he senses Yakon's power, but rather that he's able to tell where he is because of the motions of the air currents and other types of natural phenomenon. Again, proving that nobody senses Bobby's fighters, probably because they're powered by dark magic, but rather 
Instead, they have to kind of go off of fighting them hand to hand. Again, when Goku begins to fight as a Super Saiyan, Yakan absorbs his power. And this is the only time that they really start to understand just how strong the humans are, or rather the Saiyans at this point. And when they see that he has 3,000 killies, a certain type of power level that they use, which again, Deborah is shocked. He doesn't think that there's a race that should exist, that that's powerful. And if he truly did know how strong they were deep down with their potential and everything, like so many people say, then this wouldn't surprise him. He'd be like, oh, who cares? But instead, we see that when the power gets taken from Goku, uh, Gohan even suggests that all of them fight together so that Goku won't have to become a Super Saiyan. So Yakan is stronger than the base Saiyans, but weaker than a Super Saiyan to where all of them ganging up on him and jumping him uh, would actually be able to help if they went all Jujutsu Kaisen on him. This is the point where what ends up happening, you know, for the 20,000th time I say that in this video, Goku shows off his true power after Shin is saying that he's a fool and they should all fight him together. He shows off his Super Saiyan 2, which at the time was his true power until, of course, you know, he uh, pulls Super Saiyan 3 out of the plot hole. And then at that point, he makes uh, Yakan blow up, almost like Byako and Yu Yu Hakusho, and then Moro decades later, because they couldn't think of a better way to end the story until, you know, they thought of an even worse way. And then what ends up happening is that he is again shocked and... Uh, this is when he jumps down, he finds out firsthand that Goku and Vegeta are both stronger than Gohan, who's been slacking off. And this is when Shin finally admits fully that this is why they're so confident. When they want, they can power up just like Goku did. Unbelievable. I can't believe I've been surpassed by beings from the lower worlds. So he's only saying now when he's seeing them at their full power as Super Saiyan 2s, and really, that wasn't Goku's fullest power, but still, that he's been surpassed. He thought he was tough shit until right now. Well, guess what? He is actually weak shit, but no, not really. He's strong compared to most fighters in the arcs that came before this. He would probably be able to fight very well against regular Perfect Cell at the very least, but nonetheless, he isn't quite on the level of the strongest fighters. But even then, we see more of this displayed. For example, when we see after this that uh, Vegeta becomes Majin Vegeta. And what do we see? He uh, doesn't want Goku and Vegeta to fight because he knows, again, this could lead to Boo wakening up. And so he steps in the way. He tells him, oh, you're going to have to do this over my dead body. And Goku, well, he agrees to the terms of, of Shin's conditions for their battle because he raises his hand. He pulls an Arnold from Terminator 3, talk to the hand, and he proceeds to uh, decide to fight him. Even, you know, both of them are shocked here, especially one of the moments I really like, the little moments here, Vegeta, totally shocked by this event. Gohan, dad. And so what happens? Shin puts his hands down. He lets Goku do it. Now, there's a question of whether or not Shin would even actually lose to uh, Goku here as a Super Saiyan. I know that one of the Daizenshu says that Shin is uh, equivalent to Super Saiyan Goku from the last arc. I don't agree with that based upon what we're right about to see in a minute. Either way, the fact of the matter is that, you know, he knows that he would not be able to beat Super Saiyan 2 Goku. He literally just admitted right here that he's been surpassed. So, of course, he's not going to fight. This doesn't mean he's weaker than Pui Pui. He's way stronger than the other characters up until this point. He just isn't as strong as the top tier fighters that are right in his face. Now, this is something which is interesting because, again, he proves this firsthand when he says that, do whatever you like. Gohan and I are going to break the hatch and fight Deborah and Bobbity. Uh, if the shock awakens Boo, there's nothing we could have done to prevent it at this point. It's better we do it this way instead of waiting for him to reach full power. Try and make sure that this uh, is recording correctly because I don't want to have to record this for the third time. <laughs> If we're lucky, we'll be able to stop his resurrection. So Shin, once again, is saying, we're going to go and fight a character that was just said before when he was fighting against Gohan to be even stronger than Goku estimated, which is the estimation, of course, being stronger than Super Perfect Cell, Kanzen Cell, or, you know, whatever you want to call him at that point. <laughs> I'll show it right here, as a matter of fact. 
uh, he says, was that magic? He's a lot stronger than I thought he'd be. So again, Goku is saying uh, he's stronger than he thought he would be after he sees this magical blast from Deborah on display. In this version, he says he's a lot stronger. In the Viz version, they say it's a lot tougher. Uh, according to this, I believe this is actually what Herm said in the checker is correct, that he's a lot stronger. So again, he compared him before to Cell, and uh, Shin's like, you know what? Let's go square up to this guy and fight him in a tag team match play. You know, and hopefully we won't have to go one on one with the Undertaker. But you know, either way, he's right about to do that. Obviously, way stronger than Pui Pui, unless you're one of those people who thinks that you know for some reason they're not. And who knows how that scaling works? I mean, it's a Boo Saga. It's not the best scaling. But either way, he's right about to battle him. And well, what ends up happening next is that. They go to have this fight, and we see that uh, this is when Shin begins to show off his truest, most powerful fear of all at the awakening, the resurrection of Majin Buu. And, well, this is when, again, we see that he is ready to square up because he thinks that Buu has not been beaten uh, or that he's not going to awaken until he does. But this is where we get to see Shin's truest strength of all. Because Gohan and Shin go to flee in terror, of course, as anyone would in this situation, after Boo annihilates uh, Deborah easily. Rest in peace, the King of the Demons. Well, you know, he gets turned into a cookie after this, which is even more disrespectful. But Gohan grabs him by the hand, come with me into the sky, you know, like he's uh, Superman Lois Lane or something. And uh, they go and they fly together and Boo catches up. And what does he do? He one shots Gohan. Boom. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Yes, he was a Super Saiyan 2. You can see that in the top right corner where I talked about if Gohan was a Super Saiyan 2 when he fought Deborah. And Shin, well, he's not gonna, he's not just gonna lay down and let this happen. He attacks Boo, ah, you know, with his uh, Kya, and it does nothing because of course it's Boo. And then Boo claps his cheeks, no, not those ones, and proceeds to knock him down into the ground. And what happens? Shin is up even faster than Gohan. Gohan, he uh, had all this stuff happening between Shin and Boo before he gets up, but Shin, he gets up immediately and he proceeds to once again, fight back ah! with his uh, death stare, like he's Chuck Norris or something, except it doesn't work. And so, Boo does the same thing, and it's super effective. He drops down and smashes his spine and, you know, makes him puke up blood. But even this isn't enough because Gohan, again, shows up. He catches him off guard, which if this was super, he would have de-atomized him in a second. But in Dragon Ball Z, in the Dragon Ball manga that Toriyama wrote, it uh, does not do that. And Boo hits him with a blast. He makes him disappear. And what happens? A very weakened Supreme Kai, he does his Chuck Norris stare with only one eye and proceeds to make that blast that was strong enough to ensnare and almost kill Super Saiyan 2 Gohan disappear as well. But that isn't the strongest feat of strength we get from Shin here, actually, as a matter of fact, because something else extremely impressive goes on to happen, which is after we see that uh, Vegeta blasts through Majin Buu now, there's a lot of pausing happening in this uh, in this video, isn't there? And he proceeds to get right back up. Well, he then uses his big power scene from the uh, from the English dub, where he unleashes his scream, uh, his attack, almost similar to what we saw with the explosion that uh, Piccolo Jr. does in the 23rd tournament. An attack so strong that even Super Saiyan 2 Majin Vegeta, who's stronger than Gohan when he fought Cell as a Super Saiyan 2, at full condition, fully braces himself and still gets knocked away. But who's also really close to the attack when it went off? Well, that's Shin, who was barely even conscious at the time, not able to put up an aura and drape himself in and defend himself. He gets sent flying into the distance and... Whereas Vegeta, he's actually crippled. His left arm, as we could see, which always gets broken because, you know, Vegeta spends a little bit too much time doing uh, too much cardio with that arm, if you know what I mean. Uh, we proceed to see that he's really wrecked from this. And yet, after Vegeta blows himself up, which of course does nothing because it's Vegeta and they never let him defeat a main villain, even though this would, would have been a much better ending. Uh, what happens? Who's walking around on the verge of death and has, a, you know, has less visible damage to his body than Vegeta did, despite not having an aura up, and is still alive. Well, that is Shin. 
I mean, he does a face plant into the ground and was right about to die, but still extremely impressive. So that goes to show you that again, based upon all the evidence, based upon all the common sense in the world, you could tell that Shin was way more powerful than Pui Pui, and uh, he would easily wreck him and Yakon and probably put up somewhat of a decent fight against Deborah, uh, at least if he, you know, was sick that day or in a coma, who knows. Either way, guys, let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, make sure to stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. Yeah, and you better subscribe.